Welcome back to the poker vlog. This is episode number 43. This one is one of two that was missing from my main channel. It was my biggest win and the first time I played on a live stream. So this one is special for me for a ton of different reasons. And I, I, was, I was very disappointed when YouTube took it down for something that I said or did in the intro. So reshooting the intro now. Hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get started. Heading out to LA in a little bit. Haven't played poker there since 2012. Don't have a lot of good memories. Um, pretty much went broke out there. Was playing 510, didn't really have the right bankroll and living expenses were a lot more. Went on a downswing, wasn't in the right spot in my head. Um, so made a lot of dumb plays, lost money, had to quit poker. But uh, yeah, we're going back. So <laughs> should be a good trip. Here we are for the first time on Live at the Bike. We're playing 510, and to be honest, I'm nervous going into the show. It's a tough lineup, but luckily I end up getting one of the best seats in the game. To my right, I've got Jamie Staples in seat nine. He's a PokerStars team pro, Twitch streamer, and now YouTuber. He also has a weight loss bet for 150,000 with Bill Perkins. Next to Jamie, in seat one, you know him, you love him, Andrew Nimi. Between Andrew and I is Destin in the two seat, He's played on live at the bike a few times now. He made it clear he was after Andrew from the start, saying he was gonna three bet him all night. Destin usually plays higher. He can put you in tough spots. Definitely not afraid to bluff. Other than that, I don't really know much about him. I heard he's just a really humble guy. Stop playing at the gym! <laughs> oh, this shit is easy. I could only be me, me, me. Though I got my own CD. Anyway, glad to have these guys on my right. A few minutes into the session, we get pocket aces in the hijack and raise it to 35. Mike McConti to my left in seat four, picks up ace deuce suited in the cutoff. He decides he wants to play and three bets to 90. I'll let Ryan and the trooper who are commentating take over from here. Oh, and Derek flatting the button with queen deuce. Are you familiar with queen deuce and live at the bike? Uh, no. Okay, so Israeli Ron, who's in the chat, who might be playing Thursday, we'll see. Uh, Israeli Ron, his favorite hand's queen deuce. He's a, one of our Wonderful regulars on Live of the Bike, one of our favorite players, and he has a Queen Deuce tattoo on his arm. Okay, got so it. So everybody on that Live of the Bike long. plays Queen Deuce just for Israeli Ron. Okay, got it. So it's a thing. So Derek flatted it, and Brad's going to four bet pocket aces. Look yeah. At, look at that poker face he's got there. What's with all this raising? Are you more of a fan of calling? Yeah. I think Mike. Is there any chance that Derek calls with uh, Queen Deuce though? There's always a chance. Oh, well, if there's a chance, then I like raising. <laughs> Derek's a wild card, but now he folds. Oh come on. Next we get King Jack offsuit in the big blind. Jamie Staples opens from the cutoff to 35. Destin calls in the small blind with Queen 10 off. This is a good situation to three bet, but instead I just call for 25 more. The flop comes Ace 4-4. No one's too happy about it, it checks around. The turn is a jack, which improves my hand and puts me in the lead. Destin and I both check to Jamie and he bets 40. It's a very small bet. Destin calls with his gut shot straight draw. After it checks through on the flop and getting four and a half to one, I'm happy to call for 40 more. It's tough to put Jamie on a hand at this point. If he has an ace, I'd like to check back on the flop from him and a small bet on the turn. If he has a monster like ace is full or trips, I like it too. He might also do this with a hand that doesn't have much value, like a gutter, in order to fold out smaller pocket pairs, and maybe he'll bomb river if he misses. I wouldn't expect him to do this with a pocket pair, I mainly expect him to check back a hand like the one he has, since better pocket pairs probably won't fold with such a small bet, and he's giving most strong hands the right price to call. The river comes out, and it's a miracle three, Destin and I both check, Jamie with the boat, now fires a bet of 225, it's a pot-sized bet. Destin folds and it's back on me. 
Jamie could reasonably take this line with a boat, trips, ace-king, ace-jack, ace-queen, or maybe any ace, just thinking that I'd have three bad ace-king or ace-queen, and maybe would have raised ace-jack on the turn. So if we both have an ace, we'd be chopping, and he might be able to get me to fold a chop. I also thought he might take this line with a misdraw. I'm getting two to one on a call, meaning that I have to have the best hand more than 33% of the time for a call to be profitable. I really only have a bluff catcher, so it's not very likely a call here will make me money in the long run, since Jamie probably isn't bluffing more than a third of the time. I just can't help myself. I toss in a chip. Jamie rolls over the full house. If he hadn't hit that third three on the river, I'm not sure if he would have checked back or turned his hand into a bluff. Ten minutes later, Jamie opens from under the gun plus two with pocket jacks. Destin calls from the hijack with the 7-6 offsuit. Seemed like Destin was after Jamie because Jamie beat him earlier in a hand. I look down at ace-10 off in the cutoff. This hand is not that great, so I don't love calling preflop bets with it. I prefer to fold or three bet. If it were suited, I'd mostly call. After seeing Jamie open preflop with his pocket threes, I figured he could have a fairly wide opening range, so this looks like a good spot to squeeze. I have blockers to some big hands, and if I don't get four bet, I'll be playing in position. I three bet to 160. It folds back to Jamie, who flats for nearly 10% of his stack, so it's time to be somewhat concerned. Destin also calls the three bet. I put him mainly on a small or medium pocket pair. The flop comes ace, king, queen, rainbow. Both players check to me. I'm in a position where I'm likely to be either way ahead or way behind. Jamie could have a hand like ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack suited, or pocket queens and have me crushed. Other than that, I should be ahead. This board shouldn't have connected well with Destin at all since he didn't 3-bet Jamie pre-flop when he had the opportunity, so you can take out virtually every hand that is beating me other than possibly King-Queen or Jack-10. I check back. The turn is a 9, Jamie checks, and Destin takes a stab at it betting 250. I don't think there are too many hands that Destin's going to have that hit this turn after he calls a 3-bet pre-flop except for maybe pocket 9s. He somehow has 7-6 offsuit, so Maybe I should reevaluate the range I put him on. All I can do is make decisions based on the information I have at the time. I know he likes to bluff people. This board isn't very good for what I perceive his range to be. I've underwrapped my hand so far. So under these conditions, folding is out of the question. I call, Jamie folds, which I'm really happy about because I was concerned he'd be the most likely person to have me beat. With him out, Destin and I are heads up. The river is a complete blank. It's the five of hearts. Destin bets 600. He's saying that he's got at least two pair. There aren't a lot of two pair combinations that make much sense, so I mostly put him on jack 10, pocket nines, or a bluff. I'm getting a good price. I call. He says that he has seven high, so I flip over my hand and take down the pot. Later on, I pick up pocket nines on the button. It's a straddle pot. I open to 70. It folds to the straddler Wayne. He's got his own poker vlog that he does. He recently posted the most boring video I've ever seen. It's nine and a half minutes of our group eating meat at a Brazilian barbecue restaurant. I'll have a link down below in the description box if you have nine minutes and 21 seconds that you don't care about wasting. Wayne is a pretty awesome dude though. He calls with ace eight of hearts. We're heads up. The flop is queen nine seven with two hearts. We've got the second nuts. Wayne checks. It's a relatively coordinated board, so I don't mind a larger bet, particularly if we were against multiple opponents. We are heads up, and I have all the nines, so a smaller bet to keep Wayne's range wide is okay too. I bet 60. Wayne calls, and the turn is another 7. We make a boat. He's drawn dead. He checks. Once he calls a flop bet, I think he could have either trip 7s, a queen, or a flush draw. All of these holdings will be able to call a larger bet. I put in 155. I want to build this pot up for a big river bet. I also like a bigger sizing because it makes it seem like I could either be bluffing or semi-bluffing. Another interpretation is that it could look like I have a vulnerable hand and don't want to let someone who's drawing see a river cheaply. Wayne calls. The dealer puts out one of the best cards in the deck. It's the three of hearts. In my head, I'm praying Wayne has a flush. He has slightly more than twice the pot left in his stack and he just rips it in there, turning it into some kind of a bluff probably hoping that I'll fold threes full or sevens full. This is a tough spot. I've got a hand that I could go either way with. Let's watch in real time how long I consider my options. 
Ooh, the brutal cooler river for Wayne. Can he not get so stacked here? What do you think Brad's going to bet? Wayne went all in. Wayne just opened all in and Brad snapped. Oh, Wayne was first. I was confused on the uh, action there. Yeah, Got it. Wayne yeah. went all in <laughs> on the Heart River. And oh, what yeah, a yeah, brutal yeah. river for Wayne. RIP Wayne. Brad stacking Wayne for a $3,300 pot. Well done by Brad Owen. Obviously a brutal run out for Wayne. Still not a great idea to shove river since I can pretty easily get away from any hand that doesn't have him beat. But I don't know that he would have been able to avoid stacking off eventually had he played that hand differently. I know that I was hard on Wayne's YouTube channel earlier, but you really should check it out. The poker vlogs are okay, but he has several of the absolute best videos of poker players eating Brazilian barbecue that I've ever seen. He goes in the daytime to get Brazilian barbecue. He goes in the nighttime. This video here seems to be better than the rest as 16 people like it and not a single person on earth dislikes it. Okay, back to the game. In this hand, Armenian Mike limps in from early position. Joe raises to 55 with pocket queens. Destin picks up ace-10 suited on the button and makes the call. I have pocket fives in the small blind. I call for 50 more. Armenian Mike also calls. The flop comes 9-7-5 with two spades. We've got the fourth nuts. Checks to Joe, who's the pre-flop raiser. He has an overpair with a backdoor flush draw, but against three other players on a draw-heavy board, you're never gonna love your hand too much. He puts out a bet of 130. Destin has an easy call here. He tossed in some chips. It's on me. I have a great hand, but it's extremely vulnerable. There are a number of bad turn cards. I wanna get in as much money as I can right now. I put in a raise to 600. Mike folds, it's back on Joe. He tanks for a while before ultimately making a really good fold. Against a check raise and having one player behind you, it's a pretty standard laydown but a lot of people don't have the discipline to let their overpairs go, so nice fold by him. Now it's Destin's turn to act. He has a draw to the nuts with two overs and a backdoor straight draw, plus he's in position. We're both deep. Sometimes he might even have the best hand if I'm semi-bluffing with a combo draw, but he has a key blocker with the 10 of spades, making it a lot more likely that I have a straight, set, or two pair. He calls for 470 more. You can see me here glance at his stack to see how much he has left, this is where I think the graphics guys might have gotten it wrong. It says that he has 2610 in his stack, but it looks to me like he has closer to 18 or 1900. He has around a half stack of pink chips, which are hundreds, a stack of purples, which are 25s, and two or three stacks of $5 yellow chips, plus some $1 chips. We go to the turn. It's the king of clubs. It's a great card. It shouldn't have helped Destin much. The pot is pretty big already. I still don't know exactly which cards I need to fade on the river. I go all in because I don't want to bet less than the pot, giving the opponent a good price to call, plus implied odds. Also, if I were bluffing with some kind of combo draw, I'd shove here too. We have to keep in mind that Destin has 18 or 1900 in the stack rather than the 2610 number you see on the screen. He's getting a little less than two to one on a call. He knows I'll have straights, sets, and two pair hands in my range, but he's probably also thinking I might have combo draws that he's beating. No matter what, he'll at least have some outs, he calls, the dealer asks him if he wants to run it once or twice. He says once. The dealer puts out the king of diamonds on the river, giving us a full house. It says it's a $6,800 pot, but it's probably closer to $5,200 or $5,300. Still, it's a pot of more than 500 big blinds. I try to stay cool on the outside, raking in the chips, but on the inside, I'm like, I could only be me, 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 though I got my own CD on TV. Destin gonna be selling his CD after the show. I know I've had some jokes with Destin on here, but I think he's a cool guy and a really funny and entertaining person to watch on the live streams. Plus he normally plays 2550 on Live at the Bike, so I doubt he cares too much about losing a few pots to me. The very next hand we get King Jack offsuit in the cutoff. It's a straddle pot, one player limps, so I raise to 90. Derek, alive at the bike reg, calls in the big blind. So does the limper. The flop comes ace-king-8 rainbow. Both players check. I'm happy to get the showdown cheaply and perhaps give one of the opponents a chance to bluff on a later street. I check back. The turn is a queen. Derek bets 80 into 295 with pocket sixes. I don't really like this bet because it doesn't accomplish much except maybe get a hand like sevens or nines to fold. 
Mike Coles with his pair of queens. I'm getting a great price. I could be ahead, and if not, I still have a Broadway draw. The river is the three of diamonds. Both players check. I'm happy to check back. My hand is good. At this point, I'm up about 6,000 on the night. Towards the end of the session, I get into it one more time with Jamie Staples. I open to 35 with ace jack of diamonds from early position. It folds to Jamie. He has pocket aces in the big blind. I heard that's a pretty good hand, and he three bets to 150. We're both extremely deep, and I'm in position. Jamie isn't always gonna have aces here. I make the call. The flop isn't too good. Jamie checks. I've got ace high and beat most of the hands he might bluff three bet with. If he three bet pre-flop for value, then he'll definitely call a bet, so there's no reason to turn my hand into a bluff. I check back. The turn is the seven of diamonds, giving us the ace high flush draw. I pick up quite a few outs, and Jamie bets 230. I call again. Unfortunately, the river is the six of spades, and Jamie makes a pot size bet, probably thinking that if I have a hand like queens, jacks, or tens, it'll put me in a really tough spot. I only have ace high though, and let it go. That was the last interesting hand I played before the stream ended. I rack up for the most I've ever racked up for and head over to the cage. Right here, I'm about to push my racks of chips to the cashier, and I'm thinking about how cool the shot's gonna look. Instead, I mess it up and look like an idiot. I ended up winning 5160, which is the most we've won on the vlog so far, which is awesome. And I think we've played the biggest pot on the vlog also, so that's great. Um, I ran really well and I had the best seat at the table for sure. Um, all the best players were on my right, it worked out really well. So very happy. I was definitely nervous coming into it um, just because I thought the lineup was pretty tough. So happy to come out with a win. That's it for day one at Live at the Bike. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd appreciate it. If you hit the like and subscribe buttons because it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to get back to you. So yeah, this one was the biggest win that I had for years, actually. And uh, I, I only recently had my next biggest win about a year ago. And, and this video, I think, was initially put out at the end of 2017. So for like four years, you know, this session was, was the biggest win that I had and, and it was pretty awesome for me. Um, and, and to do it all on a live stream was pretty cool and my first ever live stream at that. So uh, awesome, it, it was on YouTube on the main channel for um, a couple years and then out of nowhere, YouTube just took it down. So that was frustrating for me, but uh, glad to have it back up. And I hope maybe this is a new, maybe you guys haven't seen this one or a lot of you haven't seen it. I hope that's the case and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. All right, good luck at the tables and I'll see you next time.